through technology and you you know how your reality is going to be because it's all out of a handbook they're sitting on it and when you're ready they'll give it to you they're years ahead always always years ahead so we move on more medieval glow programming yeah i know um yeah i know it's not that sort of shows you doesn't it what rubbish it actually is doesn't it but a lot of um sort of satanic overtones with this glow. I'll give you a little idea. You have a little book here. So there, RKO. Um, the globe again, and that's from the 1920s. Check this out, guys. Um, the curvature of one mile square distance is 0.666 foot. The tilt of Earth's axis from equatorial plane is 66.6 degrees. Mean orbital velocity, velocity of Earth is 66615.963 miles per hour. The value of the gravitational constant G is 6.6 .6 to the power of 10. Do you think that's an accident that they just encoded all the globe with 666? It's a really big coincidence, isn't it? They're alarming to me. Anyway, where are we going? Right, so globe programming. Ah, that's a really small version. Sorry, it's not really big. Uh, the clowns. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> I got a mental block. The jester's clap, right? This is a key, I think. They're showing you um, a notorious projection in there. And what it says in Latin is basically, it's all a lie. Okay, so I got one of them up on my, uh, on my wall where I live. I, 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 one of my favorite all-time maps. Now, this is one of the best things in antiquity I found of recent times, and I think it paints it all. What you're seeing there is Satan sitting on top of a globe. The people are not on the globe, by the way. They're on a flat plane. But they're in chains, and they're trying to escape that globe. They don't want none of it, because they know. Um, and they're trying to get away from it. And look at Satan, all the chains with some uh, advanced technology. They all got in antiquity. I'll just show you some uh, bigger sections of it so you can get the idea. I think that's pretty telling. I really do think that's pretty telling. This is from uh, 1600s as well, 1680s, I think it's around. So people are not actually on this globe. They are chained up and they're escaping this globe. More globe programming. Trying to work out the finer details. This is so heavily encoded with Masonic symbology, it's even difficult to print the words. Um, everything you will see, I suppose if you put a measure on that... Uh, on that compass she's using there, they will probably say 23.5. They all do it because um, the compass setting you see on the Masonic symbol is actually the tilt of Earth as well. What's more playing, isn't it? So transparent at this stage, guys. Excuse me. Right. Mm. If you knew NASA photo of the Earth and the Moon was real, wouldn't the Earth and the Moon look more like this? as in um, the size of the moon, guys. If you actually were on the moon's surface, the Earth would fill the entire sky. On account of how big we are in conjunction to the moon. And what about um, the moon? Is actually, if it was a planetary body and it's sitting outside the Earth, okay, in this, in this orbit. Now, the Earth is supposed to have this massive um, gravitational pull, okay? And the moon's got one too. So, why in the hell isn't the Earth dragging in the moon to its event horizon. Some sort of miracle again, isn't it? Magic non-existent gravity. There's a million of them anomalies, guys. It's just... This. This is what it's all about. I go, I'm at the stage in my life now, guys, that I can't even look at it. I can't. I'll show you some original NASA footage. No, some original NASA videos, guys, right? Yeah, I know. Went to the moon, took five shots. Went to the bathroom, took 192 shots. Should tell you everything you want to know, guys. And true as well. So, um, yeah, he died recently, didn't he? And have any of you seen that um, interview with, um, actually, when um, Trump is talking and Buzz Aldrin's there? So have you all seen that? When he's like, he's rolling his eyes, he's going, he's going, yeah, we're going to invest in space. And he's going, yeah, of course you are. <laughs> in your dreams. He's just giving it away. I think you better be careful, him. I can't get him to like Buzz. No. No, I am actually, even though he's a 33 degree mason. But no, I don't really. All right, then. So I'll just cover um, what I'm going to go into now, guys, before I go into um, what I 
basically got well known for is uh, like alternative history. But what I got to show you, all of it is basically married to the flat earth. It's on the flat plane, so it is. <laughs> NASA. Now, I'm only going to skip through a few of these, but I'm going to do it quick, okay? Just show you how transparent and rubbish they are. Now, most, not all, but most of the stuff that I'll show you now, in fact, all what I'll show you will be my own, as in photographs of stars are my own, and, and the other stuff is all my own, not off YouTube. So, um, dust. There's no dust in the coupling of, sorry, the, the pan of the lunar module, but we all know that one because it'd be ridiculous because apparently it's a fine dust. But wouldn't a fine dust lift off into the air and not crush down nice and neat like it's damp with water? Ooh, I've seen a light flash through there then. Oh, it's okay. So coming down the gangway, he's illuminated, proving that there's a secondary light source. Now, I've got thousands of these guys, but I find them, like I told you earlier, I'm finding that so nauseating and transparent at this stage. It's why I moved on to alternative history. They're lying, and that is that. But I don't want to sacrifice the rest of my tape playing NASA, uh, NASA videos. They're horrible people. I can't even look at them. Especially that one that Ida Landucci was showing earlier with the hair standing up. Do you know where? I can't handle that woman, guys. All them hair products. Can you imagine the stink on the ISS, guys, with all them hair products? And the water they sprinkle around. There's laptops everywhere. They're in imminent danger of dying any second. They're like, don't worry about it. It's only a laptop. only blow up in a vacuum of space. In it, though. No danger, nothing happening. So uh, the size, obviously, the size of Earth is ridiculous in conjunction with what it's supposed to be. But And that has always intrigued me. Um, apparently, they can work on a remote control camera on the surface of the moon, and they can watch the limb go up, all the way up. I wish I could show you that video. But what I liked about it was all the colours they added later. Wasn't that very 60s of them? Did anyone see those colours? I thought, oh, that's very 60s. That's really psychedelic. Because you don't get it later, and it's the only image I've ever seen in reality of them doing that. Isn't that funny? I don't know. So let's move on. Um, basically, while you're looking at the things in the background of what we call Kubrick Mountains, you can obviously see the line here, guys. This line here, okay, you'll see in every NASA shot. I could show you this shot on different missions, different years, and they're using exactly the same mountains, okay? In fact, I've seen these two mountains, real life, real time, like nowadays okay now this is the kubrick line they use the same technology um stanley kubrick did in the film uh, space oddity you know the bit at the beginning when they throw the bone up um and it turns into a spaceship well the whole of that backdrop is what attracted the government of kubrick to make the moon landings etc but we all know that anyway don't we most of us do so um, I don't have to talk too much about the moon because it's a ridiculous notion. Now this is one of my favourite, um, this was mine, my video, one of my favourite ones, where I picked apart the, basically, <laughs> the Gemini mission, which was the mission that Buzz Aldrin went on before the Apollo mission. And the reason he went on it, the, it's basically, his job specification for getting on this, this programme was he was a very experienced scuba diver. Not his degree in nuclear physics. No, I, I'm not joking. He's on an interview saying this. Oh, the, I got the job because um, I'm a brilliant scuba diver. Because it's all in water, you see. Now, I'm going to show you something now that you will just... Basically, you're not going to be able to argue with me and say, all right, that's in space. Because it would be completely impossible unless we're in a Disney movie. So there he is. He steps out of his... Um, is craft in space. But what we're going to have a look at now is you see these round bits on the ship? Well, we're going to have a little close-up look at what they're like and what NASA's engineering skills for the biggest budget in humanity, trillions and trillions, 84 million pounds a week, clutching for this, okay? Now, let me just mag up and I'll go through. So if he comes out and what you see here is the worst workmanship in reality. If I could just show you, you'll see wires sticking out that are broken away from the ship. You will see gaffer tape undone. You will see a light shining through from the inside. You will see um, a tweeter, uh, which is uh, basically a speaker that is from the house. I might do a close-up. No, really, it is. They've got another one as well. I'll show you. No, they've got a car, car speaker. Yeah, no, I'm not even joking. So... Um, what I want to do is show the close-ups. Now, what they've done is managed to only put in every other screw. It's not important because we're in the vacuum of space. All right? God. I know. 
So uh, what we got here is this is in space, but what they didn't know is years later, a flat earther was going to come along and pull it. Because it's broke. The wires are sticking off, and it's completely broke. It's not even working. I'll show you now. See the wire hanging down here? The whole thing is broke, guys. It's snapped off. It's in space. No, no. Don't let, hey, hey. They're in space. They really are, all right? You're on a globe. <laughs> oh, at this stage, it's so comical. So this is um, a window that you would need to seal because there's imminent death outside the window. Do you understand? It's in a vacuum. So what you need to do is make sure there's a gap under the window seal for safety. Okay? Do you see it? See the light shining through? Okay, so how's that happening with the globe outside? Oh, it's really weird, isn't it? How do they do that? Sounds like magic. So, as you can imagine, spaceships are pure safe, okay? So, so yeah, they didn't put the um, gaffer tape on there, but they put plenty of gaffer tape on other parts. Now, in 1974, I had a small black and white television in my bedroom and had an aerial on it. Identical to that. All right? Covered in sticky back plastic. And use one we made earlier. They're insulting us. Now this is quite comical. This is um, a really important device. It doesn't actually do anything, but they'll tell you it's really important. Okay, so we got screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, screw missing, screw missing. And in the main superstructure of it as well. And it won't rattle apart because there's no friction because it's in a vacuum space. All right? <laughs> All right, then. So there you are, a bit of a close-up there. And you can see that they don't bother. And underneath, what you've got is, because it um, needs to be really light, and they'll make it in really thin gold because of the weight, they got basically a uh, ply board. <laughs> it's quite a heavy ply board. Anyone lifted a sheet? So they get it up there. At, uh, what's, the, what's the cost per pound, did they say? Something like 80,000 a pound in weight, isn't it? Makes you think about that gorilla suit uh, Tim Peaks had took up, or the guitar for uh, the expense. And I'm not even joking, that's how much they say it is per pound to get the stuff up there. They take all this junk up there. What about the rugby shirts they had, or for the, N for the NFL f uh, champions of whatever, um, Super Bowl? And they literally interpreted who's going to win, and they had the shirt ready. So what did they have? A complete collection of every team in America so they could know one on the ISS to put it on. Genius. I t who said that? You're, you're epic. It is genius, mate. I, I'm glad you can appreciate that one. So, so um, this was one of my, be uh, my, one of my better NASA busting videos, because you can't really deny that that is a tweeter, as in uh, the old man's car. And um, there's one, two, three screws missing. And as I said before, it's not really important, because they're only in the vacuum of space. All right? Obviously, that tweeter there as well has got a screw, miss, screw missing, but like their budget can handle it. All right. So do you still believe in that they're going to space, guys? Or, or what about this one? This one's not really in space. It probably couldn't eat no water out, could it? So, yeah, well, uh, helium-3 it is, mate. Or whatever they make up next. Um, gaffer tape not really connecting, and you've got a couple of screws missing on the superstructure here, which is not really safe. That's the main structure. Too many scientists, guys. This is the culprits. Now listen, until 1900s, paradoxes did not exist in our reality. They introduced them. Do you know that? We didn't have these twisted, counterintuitive uh, mind games introduced by these law. And we got everyone there. We got the one that went up and burst through the dome in the Hennessy adverts, actually, uh, apparently seen the flat plane, which is their Picard. Picard. Funny thing happened with him. Um, I made a vlog about Picard not so long ago, which is this gentleman here, who said, went up in an air balloon in the 30s, and he states that he's seen the Earth as a flat plane lipped up at the edges. Well, his son's also a balloonist. I did a vlog on it. I couldn't believe it. Um, he looks pretty similar, and what he tried to do, which has apparently never been done, is fly a balloon um, east, um, and he got... He went up in Europe, he got us and didn't get as far as China. Nobody has apparently ever done this. Isn't that funny? So he comes down, and what, what map do you think he was using to do his balloon trip? And as he muffled equidistant. 
I saw my video, if I posted about it, I thought it was like, wow, he's like doing a balloon trip and then you know, he's using a flat earth map for his, for his you should say it all, but everyone's in there. You've got um, Heisenberg, obviously, um, um, Einstein, Marie Curie, who else we got your Bohr, Bohr there. Um, so every uh, physicist of note is all in the same building at the same time, the same tin camp, okay? This has all been worked out. These people are social engineers. None of them are doing what they tell you they do, okay? Even Einstein, you do the research, it turns out he's not really doing bloody calculus. His wife's doing it for him while he's off philandering. And that's, no, that's the story, really. Skylab. Now, I remember this going up, guys, in the 70s. I remember being in a football stadium once thinking, what? They got something as big as this? Big as this pitch up there. How is that possible? I was only about eight or something. Now, I remember this going up. It was um, a double-story building inside. The Russians would float up and down. Apparently came down in the Indian Ocean, but conveniently, right out of the way of any land, so nobody could see it coming down. Conveniently. But they did scare everyone first and say that it might come down on your head. Now, well, who's this guy who's hanging around in space all the time taking photographs, guys? <laughs> Anyone know? Because he spends a lot of time lo loitering in space taking photographs, doesn't he? Now, we haven't got the space shuttle at this era. So, what, what space implement have they got up there to take the photograph of Skylab? Hmm? Yeah, all right. Right, this nutty stuff that's happening with uh, Dr. Evil, a.k.a. Elon Musk. Um, now, is it me or a, a rocket uh, meant to have thrust to push him up? Now, we all know thrust doesn't work in a vacuum. Most flat earthers do. Okay, rockets don't work in a vacuum. So, when things are pushing up as a thrust, how do they come back down and land on a pretending raft in the sea then? Does anyone actually ever think about that? How the force of, you know, supposed to be pushing it up and then it just gently slips down. Is this a magic flame that's got a pull in action that pulls it down to terra firma? They don't want you thinking about this stuff too deeply, do they? That's just weird. Now, these I discovered, or I've got a lot of original NASA, they're all time-stamped images. So what they're doing is, this is the moon mission, they're moving, moving away from the moon. Now, what I want you to look at is the weather patterns. They cover hundreds of thousands of miles, days of travel, but the globe pattern never, ever changes. So keep the um, eye, this is far away. You can see the bottom band, you can see it here. Keep an eye on that bottom band there, and the bit of this curl here. And Days and days later, um, no weather or any wind, because it always stays the same. Lo. No matter if it's close up or thousands of miles away, there's exactly the same weather formation all the way to the moon and back. Oh, they turned it around. But it's still the same, isn't it? So there is um, original NASA, and they're showing no weather. So it's obviously 100% fake, okay? What they're doing is, we know what they're doing, they've gone X amount far up, whatever, 70,000 uh, on a jet or a high altitude plane, and they've shot it out of a window. We've all seen that footage, but that makes a lot of sense to me. I think that's what's going on, because obviously they're not shooting a globe. Otherwise, it's just rank CGI. So, <laughs> uh, what is that there? That's not actually mine. That's Sean's, isn't it? All right. Bloody hell. What happened there? All right, there you are. So, um... Not Sean's. Sorry, uh, Dave Mash, I mean. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> All right, then. So you get the picture. They don't change, so we can establish that that's fake. Okay. Scuba divers in space, as I've explained. All NASA is done in moon pools, guys. Okay. Get yeah, me. What? Well, I'm going to flow, though. Uh, that's not going down well with the peeps at all, Cash. Should we have a little vote? Who thinks I should carry on for a minute? Yeah. Overwhelming, Cash. <laughs> all right, I'll kill it off in 15. Okay, we're on it. We're on it.
All right, then, I'll skim through. Scuba divers, because they're in water. And there's one we've caught before, and he's in a little hatch, and you see, actually see him with his scuba diver gear on, but there's a lot of that out there. I've got, like, hundreds of videos of them with, basically, um, bubbles. We love space bubbles, we do. Um, proof of fake moon landing is five, in five seconds. The horizon is visible behind him, and in front of him, I in his visor, showing how small the set was. Uh, because the guy in the background, in the furthest, is set right next to the horizon, you see? You see that? So the, the set ends there, okay? So we want to watch he don't fall off his moon, all right? So we've destroyed NASA for a little bit now, haven't we? Make the lie a big, uh, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. It's a globe, it's a globe, it's a globe, okay? Uh, let's just skim through. We know what's going on there. This spirally thing is what they say we are doing at incalculable speeds. I don't actually cover the orbital mechanics because we all know it. And this is what they're trying to do. Show you that you're meaningless. When the true reality is you could not be more important. And it's all about us. The creator is literally here right now. They're trying to say we're well, that tiny speck there. They'll even give you a picture of Earth through the rings of Saturn. <laughs> God, that evil. Telling you that that's the size of meanless speck you are. And you're just dust in an infinite universe. Don't even worry about it because we're in control of you. The reality is that we need to take control back. We're on a flat plane, guys. And uh, we are not on a spinning ball. Okay. Uh, water's flat, obviously, because uh, just fill up your bath, guys. It just goes flat, naturally. Try and make water bend. And don't talk bubbles to me. That's surface tension. Go on. Try and make water bend. Okay, ship's gone over the horizon, I was in the Merchant Navy, I don't want to go there. Stars. Now I take these pictures with my camera, um, I see stars differently to what NASA see, funnily enough. Now what are stars? Well they're not suns and galaxies and globular clusters, what I see them as is cymatic patterns. So they are light frequencies emitting, uh, we are seeing uh, sono, what I believe to be sono luminescence. Okay, in the firmament, just Beads of light, okay? That's what we are. They're going round, and it makes sense. If you think of it in a fluid, and they were spinning round, and they were so luminescent, which they are, that makes perfect sense to me. So, we scoot on before Gary come and bust me. That's another one I took the other night of another star. I'm not sure which, but the eclipse. Things changed with the eclipse for me that day, you know? Because there I was, sitting, waiting for this moon to arrive and cover the sun's face, like, you know, like you're getting an eclipse is. And then the eclipse happened, and it's like, well, is the moon going to actually show up then? There was no moon, guys. There was no moon. The, moon. the eclipse happened without a moon. There's something else going on. Now, that day was a bit strange, and I felt a bit weird that evening as well. Something happened. I'm telling you, it was a strange day, that eclipse. I'm telling you. The red sun, the flickering sun. I have 4,000 views on it. I've seen this, right? On my, um, I woke up, my whole room was red, I go out, the sun is beetroot red. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And, and since then, we've had uh, blinking suns and the rest. So what's going on, I couldn't imagine, but is this stuff happened in the past? No, I don't think so. I took that out my back. Look at it. They tried to say it was Sahara sand. More absurd, insane orbital mechanics. What you make of it, I don't know. I really don't know. But it is a phenomenon that's increasing, and it's happened again last week. Um, it's been all over. Uh, the troop has been posting about this blinking sun where you can literally see it pulsating. It literally um, gets bigger and smaller. You can literally see it with your car. You can film it. It's pulsating. It's really weird. Something is definitely going on. Um, I've been trying to cover it, but as for information of what could be happening, I couldn't say. Okay? Um, except for we are going into a uh, solar minimum right now, anytime soon. So whether or not this is um, a little taster of the way we're going. Now, um, I think Gary's going to kick me off. What I wanted to talk about is the assault on humanity and the slow kill, as in um, the chemtrails of birth. But I'll dip through this quick. These are my photographs. This was taken a day ago and my street a day ago. They do it in a grid pattern. They completely block the sky so the sun doesn't come through. And if it's a lovely summer's day, they make sure they put a nice film over the, the sun so we don't actually get the full benefit of the sun. This is all part of it, okay? Are they putting chemicals in there? I don't know. People say they won't put chemicals in there because the elite or the queen would have it on her and they wouldn't want it, unless they got the antidote, of course. 
So there's the, um, on your periodical table, barium BA and aluminium AI, the uh, constituents, you know, the constituents of your chemtrails and its bell bar. What, what's the chances of that? Um, and that's the inside of a chemtrail. I've got plenty of images. They do do this, and I watch it constantly. Products of what happens? Atmospheric conditions. Um, I photographed something very unusual the other night in the sky, guys. The, the clouds have just come down. Have you ever seen it? Like cowardice? Like, you've seen them, have you? Never seen that before. Really strange. I photographed it on my Facebook. But this, what do you make of that? They're doing something, guys. I've been around a long time now. So, um, chemtrails and the poisoning of our children with toxins, vaccines and chemicals. Are you willing to give your kid to a doctor so we can pump it through with uh, chemicals you don't even really know because you haven't researched it? Just because the doctor says that it's cool? Do we trust our doctors that much? When we know that their first thought is legality and the second thought is the dollar and his bonus off the big pharma at the end of the year, which happens for pushing certain drugs. That is the reality, okay? Legal drug pushers. Very dangerous people when they do it as well because the worst addictions are pharmaceuticals and they dish them out. Yeah. So the slow kill of humanity is a definite, okay, guys? They want us down vibration. They want us ill. They want us to spin to keep the whole thing going. We don't have to go there, guys. Not one of us, okay? Now, you can still live your life in a good clean way but this is what they want for us guys are we going to follow them off the edge of the cliff like a load of lemmings nah well i know a load of people that, are <laughs> that ain't the flat earthers <laughs> okay and this is the society they would like for us guys sort of idiocracy if you like you know don't even have to go up to go to the toilet just a hole in the chair yeah so this is what they want for us. This is the society they want for us, which is basically exactly like it looked like before the Noah's last flood, okay? Where everything was industrialized, the landscape was scarred beyond belief, and uh, basically the creator just reset, okay? And this is the way they're pushing, guys. And I tell you what, these people, they can't push it enough. Hope is the anchor for our soul. I know I keep going on about hope, but... Um, when you get a deeper understanding for this, I think hope is a biggie, because it's all we got, guys. Honestly, it's all we got to hold on to. Um, these are just a variation of maps that basically I was going to go into, but I think Gary wants to wind this up. I'll come back in a minute. I'll be back. All right. <laughs> I'll be back for you. You're awesome. Peace and love. Love you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gary. You were brilliant, Mark. You were brilliant. Can I just say, wow, and um, I must admit the abuse was, was huge. I mean, <laughs> all, I, all, all I said to him is 10 minutes. I mean, that was just, you know, when I wanted a hug, and you guys assumed that I was trying to kick him off, which I was. 